Okay, um, I'm gonna get started. Uh, I'm just gonna jump in. I had a couple ideas uh, about topics for today. Uh, I was going to look at uh, getting a pull request stream is not loading for you. Hmm. I see it up on on all the other things. Try again. I don't know. Um, okay. Uh, okay. So the topics I wanted. So a couple of things I wanted to do. Um, I, I. It looks like I need to send a pull request to Linus for some some fixes to a series that landed in uh, in RC one for for five point ten. And uh, then I wanted to review more closely um, Christoph Helwig's uh, fixes for the P Store block uh, backend driver. He has some ideas about how it should get trimmed down. Uh, and finally, I, th I wanted to go through and just start committing um, the sec comp constant action uh, bitmaps. Uh, I'd like to. I haven't seen any new posting for cleaning this up for each architecture, um, but it's it shouldn't be too bad to get that in. So I want to at least get that in, in uh, into my next tree, just so there's something to work from. Because I think we've we've sort of stabilized on on what that series should look like, uh, and even if the <clears throat> even if the benefits are small in a common workflow, I think it's still going to make a big difference for some of the more pathological cases. Um, ah, already running RC1. Excellent. On your, if it's on your main machine, you're, you're, uh, you're brave. Uh, but it speaks to, I guess, the general stability of the development process. Uh, anyway, okay, so let's start uh, with a set of fixes for the orphan sections. <clears throat> I can show you what that looks like. So let's start up first with get our work tree working. I already have this. Do I already have this tree? Or the directory, I should say. Nope. Okay. So let's put it here, and I can show people what this looks like. Um, uh, so the question is how many cores are there? There's uh, 72 threads. I can go look at the details, but I have it in the in my about page on um, on Twitch. Details on that on the build machine. Um, we're gonna base this on. Uh, I actually, hold up. Let's make sure I actually have everything up to date. Okay, uh, five out ten RC one. Uh, and Stephen Rothwell recommended I do that to avoid the tag going in. I guess in case tags move or something. And we'll call this uh, fixes orphans. How about that? All right. <clears throat> so this is based on a series that, uh, nope, where is it? I guess it's per architecture, sorry. Basically, it was a series that added this line um, to to the kernel build, and I did it for a couple different architectures. Uh, the idea being that at link time, if there are any input sections, in other words, collections of stuff that's going to end up in the final elf image, um, and there isn't an explicit rule for where that section should live in the final kernel image, uh, the linker should warn about it and say, "Hey." I found a section I don't know how to map, um, and these these things look like um, Linux. This is sort of a linker script for saying where are these sections, so like the text section that holds all the code, um, is you know has a bunch of these are mostly uh, macros, uh, but you can see here's some specific named sections here, dot fix up, dot new warning. Uh, and these get used throughout the kernel for most, for various things. Um, 
if you just do a grep for section, you'll find a bunch of specialized sections that are explicitly used. And, and then there's the like general sections um, that get, uh, no, there, yes. Um, that get specified or they get built out by uh, the compiler uh, when it's when it's doing sort of its analysis of, of the code like oh this this code looks like it's going to get used a lot we'll put it in text dot hot uh, these are unlikely or other things so it's sort of an arrangement of how the text can get laid out in the image uh, when it's done so <clears throat> if we end up with something that we don't know don't know what to do with um, for example uh, the first the first fix I'll put in the chat for this is uh, for some reason uh, Stephen Rothwell who does the builds for Linux next his build host is powerpc 64 el uh, and it broke up the constructor um, go back to this for some reason that version whatever version on that uh, with GCC breaks up the constructors into separated uh, like sub subsections which don't get named and the compiler gets angry or the rest sorry the linker yells about it and says this orphan section is missing uh, and the solution was to do exactly what we did here already for a knit array which is include the subset of of them as well um, so there was some discussion on that thread but ultimately um, it came down to this unbreak Steven, so let's get it done. Uh, so that's the first bit I'd like to do. Uh, oh, there were some bugs, bug fixes in B4. One moment. Okay. Um, let's see. B, B4 AM. Um, and then I'll take this and see what we get uh, and we can apply it and look at the results reported tested fixes signed off signed off okay too many signed offs from me let's fix that up Yes, that one. Okay, so that's the first one, and we can take a look um, at this really quickly. Um, so here, these are the warnings that Stephen was seeing, um, basically that broke up the constructors into numbered constructors, um, and we just collect them again like we were before. Um, this is effectively where they would have ended up in the past. Uh, it just wasn't an explicit rule. Um, and this will silence that warning again. Um, and the reason I'm collecting these is I had sent this to um, the x86 maintainers uh, and because that's how the orphan sections came in to the kernel, um, but they seem to not want to carry it. So, okay, fine. Um, next. Uh, sort for determinism. Um, I did not look closely at why sort is being used for init array, uh, but it seemed sensible to follow suit uh, on how init array was used because init array and, C and constructors are effectively similar in this regard. So if we're going to be using it, I'd like to follow suit. Um, it's possible also, it came up in discussion, that there, there may be a preference order given to these. Let me go look at what uh, Fangaroo said, which was, um, there's another one called sort by init priority, which we don't use anywhere yet. Um, yeah, and this was sort of the, the question Fangaroo had, is why, why have sort? if not sort by net priority? And my answer was, I don't know, and I'm fixing a regression here <clears throat> in how this appears. Um, so for now, this is, I believe this is the simplest and most obviously correct fix. 
uh, there might be a way to improve it. <clears throat> but if we we're going to improve it, then we'd have to do it for both constructors and an it array and test it. <clears throat> and um, I'm, uh, I'm not going to do that right now. So I'd like there to actually be a real problem as opposed to a theoretical problem before we go spend time trying to solve it. Uh, so this is the first one to fix the orphan series. Uh, and there is one more from Nathan Chancellor. And I'll get that one pasted into chat. Okay. And I want to grab this one as well. Um, and actually, the other thing I want to check is make sure these aren't already in. Um, these aren't already in next. somehow miss it. Uh, yep. Okay. Yep, they're not. Interesting other things going. Uh let's see. Has the thin LTO patch made its way into the official tree yet? Um, as uh, I'll just say no. Um, it's still being worked on. Uh, I think you, I'm, I'm, I assume you mean the larger LTO series. Uh, thin, LTO, thin LTO is just sort of an additional piece of it. It just makes things faster. Um, unable to wake from suspend with it. Cool. Um, if you can track that down, that'd be lovely to see. Uh, I don't know if you included the CFI series on top of it or just the LTO bits, um, but uh, yeah, there's always fun corner cases. And the other question is, uh, how is this going into Linus's tree? Um, my intention is just send him a pull request because apparently no one wants, no one is claiming these and it was my series that effectively created these warnings, so I feel some level of responsibility getting them fixed. Uh, but since x86 and seems like the ARM maintainer uh, is not interested in taking these right now, or more likely they are busy with other things, um, I can do it uh, since it was my series. Um, anyway, let's grab this one as well. Uh, and plus. All right, so if we look at this one, it says, all right, we had these, uh, and we started getting these warnings uh, for sub subsections. Um, and what I wanted to do, there was some question of, because my understanding was that doing a star here on the end in the linker script uh, does not match a single dot. So it doesn't make sense to me that things like this would suddenly go away with this applied. So I wanted to do a quick test to reproduce this problem first uh, and see if I could figure out what the problem was. And it looks like it's a def config, so it should be pretty quick uh, to get this sorted out. So first of all, I'll just uh, take this and revert it for a second and see if we can get um, get it building correctly. Uh, da, 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 da. I think we will do um, yeah because this is the ld dot lld and we'll do def config for. Uh, Arm. Oh, I have to set the cross compiler. Hold on. Uh, keep those notes in emulator. Do, 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 do. Okay, so that should set us up with multi v7 def config. Um, and 
this happily. Well, I don't need to do that. We'll disable, sorry, disable the unwinder and add the frame pointer. And uh, let's see if we get things to blow up. Oops, I wrecked it. One second. Let's restart. And I gotta turn on when my my standard build process adds a whole bunch of extra debugging bits into config if it doesn't find them. So I have to turn it off if I want to do a clean clean config build. All right, no change. Good. Wait, I didn't turn on the things. Breaking again. Okay, let's try that again. All right, so this should go pretty quickly since it's a smaller def config instead of a uh, all mod config. And if uh, things go well, <laughs> um, we should get a whole bunch of link warnings. And we get to see the cores uh, warm up, which is nice. Anyway, this should only take like a minute or so. Um, anyway, so yeah, I'd like to figure out where those are coming from uh, and why star appears to fix it. But uh, I guess what we probably should do is double check the config arm unwind that it, that this um, this commit mentions, or rather this fix mentions. I wonder how long I get to wait. I'd love to get some sort of build progress indicator added to uh, kbuild. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Anyway. We're done. Poof. Okay, there it is. Spewing link warnings. Um, and we'll go back. Oh yes, here we get to all the modules again. Let's see. The v3.x of the Clang LTL support patch for Python Islands v3 new sets patches. Uh, that many cores is called cheating. Yes, absolutely. There's a. Uh, so this is the, the how I do systems administration and programming. Try to cheat as much as possible. I don't want to wait for things. Um, here, let me get you a link to Sammy's series, which he keeps extremely up to date. Um, in chat, here is where I always start uh, when I go back and look at the, the Clang LTO series. Um, that's, you know, it last commit three days ago was when he refreshed most recently. So he definitely stays on top of that. Okay, so here we've definitely got all of these um, yelling loudly about what's going on. Uh, and we will go look at the fix. And so here is, if we have not defined the arm unwinder, then we expect these to be in there. But again, I don't understand why only star would have fixed it. Uh, but let's see what we get. Uh, need to reset to here. Get rid of my, con my uh, revert and retest this. So yeah, a minute and 34 is what it took last time. It should be faster in theory because we've really only changed the link script. I'll just do the final link. And what happens? No warnings yet. All the warnings have gone away and I'm baffled as to why star matched star dot. Uh, I am super confused by that. But let's go look at this again and see what happens if I do um, CEXIDX. The other thing I don't like is that I would prefer this not match um, 
I don't know, like this technically could mask something that was named arm.exidx fun times, right? And I'd prefer that we keep it in the subdomain. Maybe it's star doesn't match dot dot. Maybe that was the, the issue. Oh, I can't remember anymore. Uh, let me try this because if that works, I would prefer it because it is more specific uh, to what's going on. Once again, do the build. And again, it's quick because it's just the linker. All right, <clears throat> boom. Okay, so now it's complaining about uh, the ex tab itself, but not the subsections. Um, right, exactly, it matches other uses like that. Okay, so uh, ex tab is mentioned in other places, right? Is it only ex tab? Uh, ex index is mentioned in other, mm, I thought we saw arm.ex index and mention other places. Fascinating. Okay, so the boot stub is already throwing these things away. That's interesting. Um, and we've got another one. Isn't this what I've just been looking at? Right, so the standard arm discard that was defined um, throws away these specific known issues, uh, or whatever, and not the top level ones. So the question is, do I wanna make this shared by, so here, let me back up. Um, in doing this, this common discard, arm discard, gets used both by the uh, compressed boot stub, this common discards, ends up including it, uh, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, yeah, I thought maybe it didn't. Common discards, might have gone. it does not. Hold on a second. Arm discards, no. Is this an oversight in my series? All right, so arm discard includes common discards. I would have expected, um, I suppose that arm discard is for the non-boot stubs, so this is actually okay. Uh, let's look at this. So this throws away absolutely everything out of yeah, ex index and ex tab. Um, so it doesn't really match that. Um, I feel awkward about changing it to be, hold on, I get the right one. So here we have, we're always throwing these away. And then the, the, the case that was added was for the .s file, not the header. And I think I might want something a little bit more specific here, because here's what got added for the unwinder. Uh, we have the arm discard here, and then the index is here. I think we need to be more careful in here. Exit and text. So this is explicitly throwing away the exit pieces for those because we're not going to keep them. Which means I think we need to do similar here. Um, hmm. Okay, I like, I like that it's got a dot and it's ex tab itself that gets left over. So let's uh, try to be as specific as possible here. And I can just add a note, We're tweaking it. All right, try it. Uh, I just broke everything again. Stop, stop, stop. Thank you. Oh no, my countdown's on. You 
stop the countdown. Thank you. All right, def config. And a script. Proper build, sorry. Okay. <clears throat> In theory, we should go down to zero. So my only concern is that we actually want these um, these sections. In the case of not using the uh, unwinder. Okay, so we do end up with a couple of uh, e indexes as well. So let's go look again. Anyway, I think I'd prefer that these just be very explicitly called out, uh, even if the compressed stuff does the other side of that. Uh, so this is a small difference, um, but this has got talked about, hopefully, I think it's in the same same intention. I will report that I made a small change. Um, made the discard slightly more specific. All right. All right. Uh, so now it looks like that. I'm happier with that. Um, I wonder if we should fix the boot stub as well, but I think it's best to leave well enough alone. Okay. So those are the two main things, and I would like to try uh, building this with a, uh, a full def config. I mean, it shouldn't have broken anything, but um, let's instead of, let's go back to unwinder arm uh, just to try the two sides of this um, and we should get okay this build will not take 25 seconds uh, it should be the minute and a half again but uh, those are the two fixes um, that have come across, and I wanted to take a quick look, as long as we're fixing things, um, at the Clang Built Linux issue tracker, which uh, people can find here. I want to check for any other orphan stuff that's open. Um, So Nathan's one is open. F sanitized thread I think is actually fixed. Let me go look quickly at, I'm reading um, bug 1069, this one. Right. Uh, cannot be, yeah, I think this is closed. So I've added the KC sand discards already, I'm pretty sure, are already in there. Um, let's go look real quickly at Enos's tree. KC sand discards. It is not. How did I end up doing that? I swear I had a specific solution for this. Look at the discards again. Hey, discards. Okay. Oh, okay. Yes, they got called sanitizer discards. Um, the final version of that. Right. So I think that that bug is actually closed. Let's go mark that real quick. And I think it's actually fixed in upstream Clang as well. Um, no, it is not. Okay, so this is an LLVM bug, maybe. 
so uh, I guess I'll leave it open. It is technically fixed, so I'm gonna apply some patches. I mean, it's fixed in Linux. Uh, fixed in Linux, Linux 5.10. Okay, let's go back to the issues we were looking at. <clears throat> um, yes, that's Nathan's. So we've got that one covered. Um, data L unnamed. This is bug 1185. Is this one? Uh, That's a RAN config. I want to come back to that one. I think that's function sections related, so I don't think that's exactly what I want. And then two days ago was this other one saying, I got a whole bunch of, this is 80, 1187 is this bug. This is uh, with LLB 1001. Get a whole bunch from def config. Um, a section warning snipped out in the errors log. Let's take a look at this file really quickly. Um, okay, so rel data, BSS rel row. Interesting. An x86 def config. So let's see. I think the problem, of course, is that I am using uh, yeah, LD12. Um, actually, I don't have to do that anymore, do I? And that's doing that too. Uh, let's see if I can convince it to use a different. Um, linker and see if we can reproduce this because I didn't think we fixed that many bugs but let's do a quick check with all the um, let's see where the orphans oh, sorry I did not have meant this yeah okay those are the two fixes we've got uh, how about doing the build with Oh, we need a def config for x86. So, uh, def config, but with c equals clang 10, ld equals ld dot ld dash 10. Will this work correctly? Let's find out. Oh, okay. And How do I have LLD installed? That's funny. Uh, okay, let me think about that for a second. Um, so this is inside my Docker instance. Um, so the question is, why did you install this? Yes, LD10. Uh, why is there not a clang then? Um, clang, there's nothing matching. Search, search clang 10. So it's just not installed. Cool, cool. Okay, quick diversion to my builder, which is this one. Uh, this is Groovy. Groovy, let's see. Prepare. I do not explicitly install Clang in here. Let's install Clang while we're at it. 10 
will be 10 explicitly installed. Let's refresh Groovy. One moment, please. Hello on chat. All right, cool. So that'll grab the Clang 10 out of there and refresh anything else in that in that um, Docker image. Then we should be able to come back. Um, yes, yeah, so a bunch of the scripts I've got are already on um, uh, kernel scripts. Uh, the Docker stuff was somewhat recently cleaned up. Uh, so they were just a horrible mess before, and now I've got a th something a little bit more sensible I can share. Um, I wanted to write a blog post on it because I can go over the Docker bits um, if we have time today, too, um, just because they got, they got weird at a couple points. Um, okay, so... LD, LLD, sorry, these are bin version. Okay, that's happily installed. How about Clang? Yay, Clang 10 is here now, obviously. It's Clang 10. 10, yay. Okay, let's try that again. Nope, not that one. Where am I? Zero. Yes, yes, it, I need to get through 5.8 and 5.9 for my security things blog. Um. So I had a different tree when I was doing this. Yes, I was. Okay, let's just take this back to Windows Zero. Uh, I don't know if Nick's watching. But, um, yes. Okay, so I can at least do that one. Let's do a no debug build. Not def config. We're doing x86. So this should match mainline x86 64 def config. Um, okay, let's see what horrible things occur. It's possible that we need a modern LL, uh, LLD to avoid the orphan warnings. Let's find out what we see first. And again, def config should be quick, probably a minute or so. Um, another thing, actually, speaking of, of Nick, he'd asked uh, to hear a little bit about my OBS setup. Um, I was thinking of writing that one up too, since that took a bit of um, trial and error on the getting audio configured correctly. Uh, but it basically all uses Pulse Audio, so I have to rearrange my microphone under Pulse Audio so it doesn't end up echoing or getting a delayed echo and doing other terrible things. Um, but that wasn't so bad. And then I've got fancy things. Um, okay, object tool warnings, it's not unexpected. And hold on to our hats, whoosh, okay. Rel A. That is interesting. So I think we had a bunch of fixes about that, didn't we? Um, let's go quickly look at the build log. Let's see. Is it just all rel A? Just a couple things that are not rel A. It's an SH index. All right, so if we are building with, let's just make sure. Okay, so if I'm building with current LLD, do these go away? Um, It seems like we've had some relay fixes since LLD 10. Um, 
My question is, is LLD10X the minimum version that we is supported, or is it Clang 10 that is supported? That would probably be the better question. Yeah, so it looks like these were mostly bugs in LLD. Um, what does documentation process changes say about Clang LLVM? So we don't really say dimension LLD. No. Okay. Well, that's a good question. Um, I think I think I'll take that up uh, in the bug report specifically. Uh, I don't think it needs to be specified here right now. Uh, usually, using LLD is going to happen for folks that are probably doing LTO or some of the other stuff, and that's going to already require much, much more modern LLD. So I'm not sure it's worth working around this specifically for the orphan warnings right now. Um, but I'll bring it up in the uh, in the bug report. Uh, so I think for the moment, these are the two two things that we need to get fixed um, for the full log. Uh, for stuff that's sort of in common, uh, in common cases, uh, that's the LLD one, and this is for Stephen Rothwell's. Now those are already a bit of a corner case because no one else has tripped over Stephen stuff. There's not a lot of folks building on PowerPC 64 natively, uh, so whatever the case, um, I think those need to get tossed into. Uh, into Linus's tree. So let's um, let's do that. Uh, first of all, I want to get uh, push this up to my tree. Uh, get push origin fixes, orphans, and then we'll look at stuff. One second. Now I get to use my fancy new. already pushed and now let's do I have a script that does uh, let's see pull request this tree and I, let's see it's based on uh, the 5.10 RC1 uh, I'm gonna name it orphan handling and uh, this is for v5.10 rc2 is the script that I've got. Um, yep. Okay. <clears throat> oh, here we go again. Let's try if I can do this. Up. All right. So. This is generally where we describe what what we've got in the pull request. Um, so uh, I'm just gonna copy these out real quick. Um, so making a summary <clears throat> for Linus to uh, forward. Um, I'm just gonna copy and paste. Otherwise, I will type of things. And Linus tends to add extra lines um, between stuff. Uh, so I'm trying to get closer to his formatting so he has less work to do when, um, when he takes a pull request. If you look at his merge style. Um, anyway. So that basically signs a tag 
tosses it up on and get that kernel at arg. And then I get to send an email. Let's see. Who am I sending it to? I don't need to do the test robot. I don't need to do myself. Um, Nathan, Nick, and Steven are in there. And I can explain it a little bit better. Um, uh, a couple corner cases uh, were found on the link time orphan section handling series that uh, landed via tip in RC1. Um, As other folks are busy with other things, I'll well, I've got these to send. I got about covers it. Um, yep, it's very small. Uh, anyway, that's it. We'll see if I get yelled at or something, but that's that's a pull request. <clears throat> All right, that's topic one in an hour. Let's go look at um, do slightly out of order. Let's do the set comp bits now. Let's switch gears. Um, yeah. So uh, let me go get the URL for that for people to look at if they want to. So here is the V5 of constant action bitmaps. Um, I thought it looked, excuse me, I thought it looked good. Um, Jan Horn added some reviewed by bits as well. So uh, with this one, I think what I want to do is check out um, RC1. Uh, actually, we're going to call this for now. Uh, I want to base this on... One second. Let's check out for next second. First of all, do I have any deltas here? I do. Um, get it. Okay, so let's look at this branch. This branch is happy. It got pulled, so let's do a git uh, merge of v10 rc1 and get ourselves here. All right, so this is up to rc1 now, and what I want to do is get um, get the v5 series pulled down with everybody's axe. Um, this message. And we can come back to it, but let's just review here. It's complaining about added, added tags, which I'm pretty sure we determined, okay, we're fine. Okay, so this is using v5, reviewed by, reviewed by, and then it says some trailer suggested by, there's a mismatch, co-developed by, mismatch. So I actually want those to be included. So let's do this instead, and then we can do our good AM. I know there's a couple that are going to look a little funny. Uh, this is the longish one. Like the ones where I signed off from two, from me and other people. Signed off, signed off, signed off, and link. Okay, uh, that's the first. Right, so co developed by and signed off by. This gets confusing. So they're the author. I have to rearrange that one a bit. So let's just go back and. Um, 
rearrange the signed off by tags and everything else to do what we're expecting. And I'll just say we're going to rewrite all of them. Okay. So this one is Code developed by, sign off by, sign off by, and the author is Ufizu. Okay. This is fine. Uh, this one is authored by. All right, so my code develop needs to go next to my signed off by. Sign off by. Viewed by, code developed by, link. Okay, that one's happier. This, whoops, wrong direction. Um, this one is code developed by, signed off by. This is another one that's weird. Uh, who was marked as author? If it doesn't list it, I guess it's me. All right, but I'm sending it. It's kind of weird that it, like, I send a patch and then someone else picks it up and then I'm going to be the also the committer and end up with too many signed off bys. Uh, so I think this is the correct pattern for the code developed by. Uh, let's see if we have author listed for this one. No, that means it's... Oh yeah, this one was me again. Okay, sign off by me. Uh, this, this one kind of makes no sense, but... Um, I'll put it here. I don't know how to do this one. It's a little weird. Someone else sending an unchanged, <laughs> an unchanged patch that I will then apply is gets strange. Uh, but this is probably the most accurate way to do that one. All right, it's suggested by, signed off by, reviewed by, signed off by. Yes. Um, now, uh, as it turns out, the only piece that I didn't want to that I didn't want to do without having the architectures involved was actually the last patch which adds these config items that um, I didn't really want yet. Uh, so the proposal I had made on this on the list was to include, um, like to split this out so that the architecture names were part of the architecture enablement patch, and that we would do this for all of the architectures, uh, and then we'd be okay. Um, the idea being that um, if you didn't have um, if you have the architecture piece enabled, you wouldn't get the specialized handling, but that all architectures with setcount filter support would be supported initially. Uh, but we can't do that yet. So what I'm intending to do is actually leave off uh, this one, this last patch. Let's quickly save off a, the piece I care about and revert the last, or not revert, remove the last one. And then let's go look at what we wanted to keep. So we wanted to keep the x86 naming. We wanted to keep this piece of the patch, but include it in setcount being enabled for x86. So let's mash it into that patch and then look at what this appears. Um, I think I'm happy with this. That'll look correct as far as I can see. Okay. Um, this oops, this builds and is happy, I know. But we can do it again. So let's just do the build in here. All right. Now, what I wanted to look at while that's doing its thing is to see, um, so if we look at this piece, the, the way this logic works right now is it's looking for basically second art native and second art compat for these pieces. And it's expecting to find this mapping that every architecture needs to do. Um, so what I'd like to do is get that in for the other architectures that support um, second filter. All right, uh, so we can, oops. Uh, it's 
isn't it? Oh, arch. Have arch, right? Sorry, sorry. So the architecture has second filter, right? So those are the architectures we care about. And when I was looking at this earlier, the problem was for MIPS doesn't have a sensible um, uh, syscall like setup. And it defines this flag, which says it has gaps in its syscall table, which would make the seccomp uh, constant action pick maps way, way inefficient memory wise. Um, so there's a special handling for MIPS. Uh, and my thinking was that that's what we'd have to um, toggle on, uh, or rather depend on not having that to gain the debugging support of that last patch. Uh, why does it have gaps? Man, I tried to look at that a little bit and it looks like it's something about how the different ABIs over time have existed or something like that. There's some description in uh, yeah yeah it has an array of entries at 4,000, 5,000, 6,000. I, I don't I don't know why. I don't know why that is, uh, but the point is, if this becomes an issue and someone wants to deal with it, uh, then that'll be the next piece, right? We want to have, um, it's like the, the evolutionary development, I need more water, um, the evolutionary development of the kernel dictates that we try to do stuff in sort of uh, logical steps, so I'd like to get this in first. And <clears throat> with this series the way it is, um, this gains x86 support right away. Um, I can, I could opt right now to try to get uh, support on ARM64 as well, since that's the other one I tend to build a whole lot. So, you know, if we compare notes here, I think we even had, uh, sorry, let me get this back up. Um, just do this again in ARM64, although I thought I did something like this already. I'm not remembering right now. Um, but it should be pretty trivial to re-implement this. Uh, let's check on the build. Looks like the everything's cold. Okay, so that's happy with itself. Um, that was the build I had. Let's do slight, something slightly bigger. Uh, Let's do a make all uh, make mod config all mod config and then do another really big build. That one will take five minutes. Um, lagging? No, I hope I'm not lagging. But I'll keep uh, I'll keep going. Um. Question in chat is, uh, does Android use seccomp? Yes, indeed, it sure does. Um, the, the the Zygote launcher um, that uh, that spawns basically everything um, it uses uh, a default seccomp policy, and I think that there are more narrow cases for different types of policies. I haven't looked, but there's some correlation between like how SE Linux policies get selected and how seccomp gets also applied. I'm not really sure, but um, I haven't looked at the details in it lately. Uh, one of the one of the amusing bits is this this patch series to speed things up would actually have papered over somewhat or probably made it taking longer to find a bug that would existed like before Android actually released with their first um, seccomp stuff uh, while it was under development couldn't figure out where a huge performance hit was coming from. And it turned out uh, they were creating the filter in a slightly the wrong place. They were creating the filter effectively before the fork uh, to spawn a new, a new process. And as a result, the zygote just kept adding filters to itself over and over and over and over. So by the time you finished booting some Android system, you had like, you know, 300 filters installed. Oops. Um, anyway, that got found and fixed, <laughs> obviously. Um, but yeah, it does now. Um, anyway, while well, that's going, let's just do this again for, um, for, 
ARM64. So, we're effectively saying, I would like uh, this stuff, although I can remove it. This obviously doesn't mean anything. And of course, it's not x86 anymore. Arm 64. Pretty sure it's called Arm 64. All right. Yep. Configure Arm 64. Okay. And the audit architecture is Arm 64. Except this one is ARM, it may be ARCH64, I gotta look that up real quick. So let's look in ARM64. Audit Arch is, yes, ARCH64 and ARM. Here's the two pieces. ARCH64 and ARM. Um, of course, there's some good question. Do we call this ARM64 or do we call this ARH64? Well, let's see where it gets used, shall we? Uh, ARH64. Where does it get used? Pretty common. Ah, Elf Platform. Maybe that's a good determining name. Um, Let's see what everyone else calls things, shall we? PA risk, x86-64, i686, um, arm calls it what? Elf platform. Hmm. Arm calls it... Idea. Oh, there it is. It's in setup. Whoa. I guess this is awfully specific. Health platform. It actually fills it in based on uh, endianness. Elf name. Cool. I've never looked at this stuff before. Yeah, okay, so there, this is saying arm v whatever is what's happening here. Uh, right, so I'll just call it arm, because I think that's ended up being the most correct. And the common use in the kernel is arm 64. Whoops, off by, off by a couple directories. Let's try this again. But uh, let's see what that looks like. Now, the other one is what the NR, NR syscalls is. How many, how many syscalls we've got? And it looks like... Does it not specify a compat? NR compat syscalls. Let's do this. Right, so that might work. Let's see what happens. Because ARM actually does slightly slightly strange thing with its um, how it handles its compat syscalls. I realize I've pasted this, which means I've lost my tabs. Watch me tab things. Looks like something is happening. On the CPUs. Super 
super exciting. Okay. I hope that this will work correctly. Let's see what this is up to. This continues to be going through modules, so it's probably going to be done real soon. Uh, and then I can build again. Yep, no errors. Okay, I am happy with this. We've got our delta. But let's push this as it is. We go. Recorded in activity feed. Excellent. And let's see if we still have. Do we have any thanks in here? Yes. Um, let's do a B4. Thank you. Let's pull requests that I retrieved. Let's do number eight, yes. It says to use before thanks Sam template, but it does not exist. Oops. Where uh no, no this is in hold on. There's a template for sending the thank yous. I have committed your stuff. Uh and I had, I think, something where I was using the templates. Ah, so this looks like it's an actual full path, not a relative path to where um, where my git tree is, which is kind of odd. Anyway. We do it. All right, let's see what our dot thanks looks like. Okay, I did not apply this one. Off uh, five for now until we sort out the. So I just dropped it. Should I renumber it? Let's do this so it's not so crazy looking. Is the automation for sending a thank you and we'll come back here and take a look at our diff let's uh, try doing a build under um, RM64 that was the arm cross let's get um, see if these include and if the include files are happy uh, with what we've done or not yeah the all the all mod config took seven minutes it looks like well it's not immediately started spewing errors um, so that's nice <laughs> 
I suppose not a lot actually ends up including setcom.h. So we probably won't see it until um, until we actually try to build kernel setcom.c. So that should work okay. Um, I bet as we can very easily also get uh, ARM coverage as well. Actually, hold on. I've learned from my last pasting. I don't want to rebuild my tabs. There is not an arch ARM. Where did that go? Uh, I think set copy? Surely, surely it's here. P trace, what? Be real easy, I said. guess it's possible ARM32 actually didn't need any um, any specific changes for a set comp um, because it didn't have a compat section. Well, I guess I can put it in the um, thread info? Seems wrong to me. Let's see what other places we could stick it. Yeah, so 108. Let's look at them. Ptrace, sure. Eh, I don't like that. Okay, hold on. Let's come back here. Uh, warnings on Arch64, but I think it's all RC1 stuff. So, apparently it built fine, which is cool. Um, I like that. that. That makes me happy. Is kernel development hard to get into from chat? Uh, I don't know. It's uh, if you like, if you are enjoy writing code in C, that's the first step, and then the rest is kind of like um, uh, learning the dialect of the kernel and then fixing stuff you're into. Um, if you're fixing stuff that other people aren't fixing, then it's pretty easy to get into. Um, I think that's the way to go. Just find stuff you want to fix that no one has had a chance to. Um, if you're interested in Clang as well, you could go take a look at all of the all the like uh, Clang first first problem bugs. I will go get the link for that um, just because it's nice to see. to that. Do, 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 do. Actually mention it on Twitter. Um, here you go. I want to see quick first issues. That's where you can find the first issues linked. Um, start work on UAFI. Whee! That's yet another unusual dialect and build system. <laughs> um, okay, so I think I'll make this exercise um, for adding the arm bits. Uh, to talk about what it looks like for the per architecture include files. Um, so if you look in um, as a generic, there's a bunch of header files in here. So when you do an include of asm whatever, uh, if if an architecture does not override that, it'll use this this copy of it. And you see things like. Um, 
Charm Sephora was the cleanest to see. So in their Asm directory, uh, there is Seccom. Well, where am I? Sorry, include Asm. Seccom does a bunch of things, installs some extra configs, and then includes Asm generic so that it gets everything else that it needs. Um, and then we do some more. Uh, we've added more here. Um, and if you look at charm include asm, there is no second.h. Uh, and the idea is you have to uh, create one and override it effectively and then include it. So uh, we could, for example, copy. No, that's going to be on Linux. Build second. Let's just copy this one here for a moment. And this is no longer what it's called. Uh, I guess since I've copied it, I can leave that in place. Uh, we don't need the compat overrides, which means we don't need the uni standard overrides. And then we don't need these pieces. And then suddenly, virtually nothing here has been written by uh, Type Hero. But I'll leave it because I copied it. Um, so yeah, native, native number, native name. Oh wait, where are we? Doing our, oh, sorry, we, let's commit ARM64 first. Uh, what did we call this? We made it look like that. Architecture tracking, sure. No, uh, hold on a second. Add this. We let's try this again. Include as I'm setting up. All right. Handles, architecture tracking. Um, now I'm going to come back and add that because I want to get the arm bit done. Okay, so get add. Arm include as a second. Now there is something somewhere um, where we specify which ones we're overloading. There it is. So here is where we do the overload, where we say we would like second to appear, but we want the generic version. And at this point, we say, actually, never mind. I've now specified one, so no longer include that for me, please. Um, and it will happen on its own. Um, are we in zero? Yes. Uh, what is my D alias for? Sorry, uh, that is short for git diff. Um, and S is uh, uh, show, git show. Let's see whatever's on the top. Uh, L is uh, git log one line. I just end up being stuff I type so frequently that I shorten it, um, make my life a little bit easier. So, uh, okay, where are we? We're on removing that and it's status. And we're on log files, modified, added that. Let's stage this as well. Yes. Those are basically all those aliases. Um, and I've got a couple more uh, like git short functions like the, the smash, uh, the git subcommand named smash was talked about in another one. Uh, I think I've since managed to squish it into my git config for smash. Yeah, now it's this horrible thing that commits to a SHA and does an auto squash on it. It's a little bit more readable as a script, but I like being able to carry it around my git aliases. Um, all right, let's build for um, arm and see how happy or unhappy it is. Config here and uh, same. But I want 
turn off my debug editions. I'm gonna let that spin and see uh, if it does the right things for that. And off it goes. Whee! Okay. So that should be, I'll let that build. I'll continue to look here at what we've got. Oh, right, I forgot to actually commit this. we can take the time to um, write this up now. Um, And, um, and system call table size. Add these four arm. Okay. And let's go get the other one too. Hoping to avoid lots of extra typing because I'm lazy. It did not work. Oh my goodness, how much have I typed now? This is not it. Oh my goodness. I'm a mess. Build. Oh, I need lunch. Where did, oh, because I'm in the middle of the rebase. Uh, blah. How about that? Longest way I've ever gone to type two sentences. Okay, that was really much longer than it needed to be. Yes, usual rebase mess. Okay, so now they actually look hopefully identical and correct. Arm 64, arm, we're happy. This drops the generic and adds a thing. I I'm confused by keeping that copyright, but okay. Um, and this build finished, which was the arm build, which was nice. Uh, like this is going well enough, I'm suspicious of it. <laughs> Let's uh, make sure about no, no, it's called arch native. If def error. Yes, it worked. Uh, worked. All right. So uh, I mean that should work, but let's just make sure. But does um. 
it does point out that um, discovering if set comp constant action bitmaps actually exist in a system, um, it's not particularly discoverable right now, either it works or it doesn't. Uh, it'd be nice if there would be a way to say, hey, uh, there are, like, these bitmaps are actually in place. Um, what I've done in the past for analyzing that is I've added something to proctid status. Uh, if we look at, uh, I have, there's an older, older kernel, but seccomp, whether or not seccomp is being used. Um, and there it's not. Uh, and here it is um, inside the Docker. So that's saying seccomp level two. Uh, but this is an old enough kernel that it does not have uh, wait, hold on, fs rock is it array somewhere weird weirdly named yeah so also added second filters which is a count of how many filters are active there and um, this was useful early on to sort of see um, how deeply filtered something was because uh, it wasn't clear to me how many filters were in place on things. Uh, and then you end up with situations like um, D D. yeah, so, um, oh, I can't see it here. Uh, uh, yeah, let's try that again. Because it's a kernel. Sorry. Anyway, point was systemd resolve the discovered had like 32 filters attached, which was way more than I was expecting. I was not expecting a multi digit <laughs> number of filters, much less 30 something. Um, yeah, they could have seen all those features as well on Psycoat. Uh, my CPUs are idle. Good. Yes, it worked. I love error. Yes, it worked. <laughs> Okay, so it is seeing them. Uh, that's nice. So that's relatively straightforward to get the other architectures. Um, I want to do a little bit more testing before I throw that up next, and I especially want to um, send out those patches because you can't put stuff in next without having sent them out first. Um, and just make sure the names are correct for the architectures. Uh, see what the maintainers think of that. Um, uh, but but appears to be working, but I want to actually spin up the emulators and make sure. Um, let's see if that will not build sec or my seccomp image is no longer, wait, maybe it is. Uh, we're still, no, it's in BZ, it's up in here. Ooh, I can still boot this on x86, I think. Or not. <laughs> no. No, I cannot, because now that I thought about it, I realized that was an all-mod config. It will do horrendously bad things. Um, let's bring this back. This was an x86. Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, so, anyway, point was, what I was thinking was, we might want to add... I'm still editing, but I'm not. Okay, add something in here to indicate that bitmaps are, um, I don't know, active. Um, not sure if we want to count the bitmaps or not sure what the nice the report would be here. Um, the other thing is that it it isn't really. Um, like whether or not bitmaps are usable is is a system-wide thing, not a process-wide thing. So it might be interesting to instead include maybe a count on this process of how many are being filtered, um, which I kind of like as a as a non-information disclosure bit of information, like don't want to have necessarily what is being filtered discoverable by default just because I tend to be paranoid about those things uh, but that it is functional at all might be an interesting 
uh, approach for this. Um, the debug file will tell you that uh, in particular, but having some kind of output about this, um, I think would be kind of nice. So having something like uh, try, uh, Say succumb filtered <laughs> instead of filters, and have this say. Um, let's go look at the bit ops, shall we? Um, include oh, but we've got architecture compat and native. We could do. I don't know. We could do two separate entries. Native filtered. I don't know if it's getting out of control or not. Um, no, no, I want that to be at the end. So, filter native and filtered compat if it exists. And then let's go look at bit ops real quick. So what we want to find is the count of how many bits are set. And I think that there are some helpers for this, uh, but it's not something I've used in a while. Rotating, nope. Sign extending, nope. Get count ordered. Wait, FLS, FLS, is that right? Oh man, I remember looking this up a while back. FLS stands for. This might be what I want. FLS. Uh, hold on. Log two. FLS. Okay. it's the right function for now uh, just so I can keep on going here I can fix it later and we can test it uh, so I think it might be FLS long no but that's of a it's not for a bit ops uh, hold on. let's try bits this is probably where I want to be looking nope that's not it either lovely 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 Let's go back here and look for uh, it set bit, test and set bit, bitmap wait. Wait, is that it? Oh, thank you. Bitmap wait. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you as I fumble around. Hemingway. Number of separates, thank you. Yes. Okay. That is precisely what we want. Uh, whoops. Here. Bitmap weight of our uh, filter is I've already forgotten what we've called it. Second action cache. Oh no, it's not exposed. Uh, hmm. So set comp filter cache. I'll finish writing it and deal with visibility in a second. Yes, yes, cache, and allow native. And this would be allow 
tap. But of course, nothing but SECOM can see these things. So instead, what we can do, we can drag this whole thing into config SECOM. Which is very interesting because the stuff here for task set comp include things that are not actually set comp. <laughs> uh, so I guess we'll do something fun like task set comp for the moment, just to get this proven out. This will actually get me to the if def, will it? Oh, yes, it will. Okay. Um, oh, thanks. Yes. Uh, I forgot the end bits. I'll get that in a sec here. Void. Obviously, we are in fact set comp now, so this will work. don't have an else here. Oh yes we do, I'm staring right at it. Okay. Um, so this is, uh, if you built without set comp, what happens when you reach that thing uh, in, uh, in, in proc? And basically the answer is absolutely nothing happens. Go away. seek file. Okay, so now we need to include seek file in here. It seems... No, I don't. I can do... Sorry, I can do... struct seek file. I've already got task struct, so I'm okay. So I don't have to include the whole header, but I will need to include it here, I think. Yeah, because of the seek puts. I think it's just seek file, yes? Yes. And I'll keep these alphabetized. So I think it's the only place I'm using it. Okay, so we've relocated this entire thing into here. Uh, added the filtering counts. Oh, right. I actually want to make this meaningful. Um, this should be like uh, how many there are total as well, um, since that's not listed anywhere. 
Um, so let's go take a look at the seek file interface again. Put decimal is there. We don't want a hex. I think we'll just use a seek printf. That's the most flexible at this point. Um, oops. Because I think I want to say like how many there are. Total. Give you some sort of sense of what's happening or how many it's tracking. expecting. Where are we? 73? Well, let's match it. Okay. It's native. Yikes. So that should add the reporting. Carriage turn, carriage turn. Leave me happily there. Um, I'd like to take a look at the array again because it's weird to lead with the carriage returns, but that's just sort of how this went. Why is it? I'm going to put it at one at the end. Why did I do this? I think it was because of. I'm in privs. Oh, it's because put decimal doesn't have a have a carriage return added at the end of it. I think that's actually the problem. Um, in this case, what does bitmap wait return? Percent D is fine. Native NR is usually going to be a literal uh, or NR syscall number. Um, sure. Let's try it. See what happens. Everything blows up. Once again, if this builds without errors, I'm going to freak out. Um, but we'll see. Uh, I need more water. I don't need to look at that right now. So. When I actually send this, I'll probably split it up into a relocate and then um, and then add. Like the logical changes here are the fact that I hauled the logic, the, the secomp specific logic out, and then I added the filter bits uh, as a thing I wanted to change. Um, and I still think it's strange that it's named task secomp here uh, as it's reporting no new prints. It's basically reporting all the security-ish things specific to that process. So I think the name is probably wrong at this point. Oh, good, things broke. Whew. Has no member name cache. What? Oh, I just typoed it or something. All right, let's go look at that. Filter. Oh, right. Uh, sorry, we need to get. It's uh, actually part of the top filter. Uh, 
now we're getting a little awkward, aren't we? Uh, R F. So now we've got a situation where we might be examining the filter uh, attached to a process, um, and that might go away. Uh, this is sort of the same problem that was in um, in the debug reporting. This is what happens if we're looking at this and the second filter has has died. Um, let's see. Uh, if I'm remembering correctly, we did a get what the the solution was. Hold on, let's look at. If it's not there, go away. Okay, so it was taking sig hand lock task signal handler flags do the dumping. Okay, uh, this is what we needed. Um, I'll keep flags. Now, this error will just not report it because we, no, sorry, it's actually this part that needs to stay in it. The rest can be reported because they're about the sec count piece itself, not the filter it's attached to. Once we do this, we're happy, and then we can um, do the unlock. Oh, I see, they're doing a get put. Task is not task, it's P. I'd prefer something a little bit more. Yeah, okay. Uh, and now I can do a put. Phew, okay. Uh, good question, I haven't gotten there yet. Uh, let's see where we are. Um, Needs to happen in here anyway. Um, if not F. Uh, we can do it. Oh, wait, we can do it not before they get. Oh, that's basically the same logic, isn't it? So you're having the like weird unlock right in the middle, but yeah, it's it's exactly the same as this one. F, then we want to unlock and go away. Uh, is this long or? So yes, inside long flags. All right, lock. If we can't, go away. Uh, read it once. If it's stable, or if it's present, sorry, if it's not present, go away. Then we get a handle on it, unlock the task, and then we can put it later. Uh, we're using it here. Uh, that looks correct to me. I could 
I, I'm always bothered by these conditions where I go lock. Oh, did something go weird? Unlock. Everything went fine. Unlock. I don't know. I don't like it. Um, if we really, if I wanted to change this around a little bit in a way that I might find more readable, I could actually do uh, this, which I'm not sure if it's more readable. <laughs> not there. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this for the moment moment. Um just because we don't want to do the put. Okay. Let's try the build again. See if I missed other things. I think I saw some stuff in chat that I might have missed um function declarations somewhere. Or I might have I don't know. Incompatible pointer type. Really? Okay. Let's go look at the header file again real quick. Semicolon. No semicolon. All right, that's happy. What's our actual error today? Too few arguments. Why? Oh, because. C doesn't know where to find that from. So we can go, oh, this is not alphabetized. Okay, we'll just go by non alphabetical order. Yeah, so the go to for unlock, I don't think it would work because I, I can't put it after I f do a failed unlock. Why, oh, no, no, I don't know why that is. Why is that? What about my bitmap type is wrong? Oops, not that one. No, it is that one. Uh, wow, native is bitmap. I don't need these because they are already the array itself. pass anything, did I? Hold on. Duh. Sorry, I just left a... Uh, I think someone actually mentioned this. I just didn't understand where they meant it. Okay. I'll actually clean this up. I said come back for the placeholder. Oh, it's one o'clock. All right. I just want to get this booted and tested to see if I can see it. I'll show you system D resolve D. Mm -hmm. Almost there. Please compress. Thank you. And go. Please boot. Thank you. Please log in. Thank you. Bit of system D resolve D. Okay, so if you uh yes, we'll just look at right, so this was the one that blew my mind when I went when I added this originally. I was like, oh my goodness, there's 34. So uh, filtered native. So 271 out of 441 syscalls are uh, 
filtered. Did I turn off compat for this? Um... No, compat is on. I don't believe you. I don't think that's true. Unless it didn't install any. And if it didn't install any, why does it have 32 filters? Um... And it's exactly the same size. I'm suspicious of my own stuff. Filter compat, allow compat, compat number. Oh, I guess they're the same. It must be the same count. Well, that is extremely suspicious. Um, but it does get me the start of where I wanted to be, uh, which is taking a look at those pieces. Um, what else has? I think I have Docker on here. Yes, so my benchmarking was using it. Right. This will be non interactive, won't it? Uh -huh. Okay. No, that's fine. That's more believable. <laughs> so that's uh, that's the view. Well, here. Uh, go do that, and then oh, it gets angry. Oh, it gets really angry. No. me alone on my inputs. Uh, I, uh, I was looking at uh, systemd resolve these zero and compat and I am basically trying to figure out the answer to that question that you have asked. Uh, run C container shim teeny sleep. This is that is PID one outside the container. So let's look at this if I haven't run out of time. All right, so that matches. Uh, it actually has a count I'd expect. Um, the fact that systemd's has a zero listed for it makes me wonder if it is not doing its um, resolve. Oh no, sorry, I was, when I was root. This really makes me wonder if systemd is doing its compat filters correctly, uh, or if, um, yeah, I, I, I need to go look at that. That seems extremely strange to me, uh, because this is how many are being filtered, which means all of these are, are immediately being uh, accepted, which means none of the filters are running, which I find unlikely because this one this is like 271 of them are filtered which usually says like there's a whole bunch of syscalls that are just tossed out immediately um so there's something weird happening here but it's not universally weird so i don't think it's necessarily my reporting of it because we can see on the docker side um, that uses a different mechanism uh, for applying the filters uh anyway so that's worth investigating a little bit more uh, but I think overall, the point is, I think I'm happy with this as a reporting mechanism because it gets you enough information um, that you can examine it. Now the question is, that one of the reasons I've made the like uh, self, the, the debug stuff only be for, you know, uh, sysad, cap sysadmin or whatever, is I, I didn't want introspection necessarily to work for a confined process. Uh, this does, however, get me a bit of an, you, 
end up in a situation of being able to do a bit of Oracle examination here. So you can use this report to figure out uh, which syscalls are being filtered or not by just incrementally forcing a filter of one syscall at a time and then seeing how the number changes. So I have to think if this is, uh, if that exposure at all is even meaningful to begin with, and then follow it up with, is this a problem as well? But at least it tests whether or not filtering is working. Um, and uh, for, for that case, but I'm gonna think about it. Yeah, I'm not sure. I've, uh, from chat, yes, I have, <laughs> I was told last week, I, I remind people of Walter White from Breaking Bad. I'll need to get a hat. Um, uh, so anyway, yeah, I'm just to uh, also answer the question. I'm looking at Linux kernels, seccomp, constant action bitmaps, which is basically a speed up to seccomp internally and how to report it in a way that is uh, useful. I don't want to just say yes, no. I found out that doing that for the seccomp mode was nice and all, but it didn't really tell me anything, uh, which is why getting the filter count was useful and getting something about the fact that, um, you know, the constant action bitmaps are working. Something about bitmaps I'd like to get reported in here. Um, and I have to think about the approach. Um, and I need a bot. If someone wants to point me to a good uh, Twitch bot to answer those kinds of questions, I'm happy to try it. Uh, anyway, so I'm not sure if I'll go with this approach. I do like, I do like, uh, sorry, I do like us uh, moving this stuff into seccomp itself rather than living in in proc because it's a lot of internal details. Uh, I gotta, come, I've gotta come up with a name for task seccomp here because it's not like most of that function these days has nothing to do with seccomp. Uh, reporting no new privs in there was already a bit of a stretch, but it's so closely tied to seccomp it makes sense. Um, yeah, I'm using Vim. Uh, that's what I've been used to. So uh, I gotta consider that and send out uh, these two patches uh, as well uh, from the top of the list here to enable them for those architectures and. They're pretty straightforward to do, so I might uh, do it for the rest of the architectures. I have Arch. Oh, yeah, have Arch subcomp filter. We did this before. All right, so. No, what I wanted was select. So those architectures. So we have x86, uh, I just added those two, and we'd skip MIPS. And you saw me do it, it took a couple seconds. It's mostly just look at the audit architecture and pick a name um, for them and make sure you can figure out where NR syscalls is defined. Uh, so I, I don't think it's too bad. Um, NeoVim or Classic? I haven't done anything special. It's whatever Vim maps to as a package. Um, Classic Vim. I haven't spent much time modifying it uh, for the things. Um, I mean, my .vimrc is kind of insane for certain things, but um, uh, but I haven't done too much particularly special. That I have a couple highlights for um, cases I don't want, like marking up trailing trailing white space. I want to see clearly and. Uh, I trained myself out of putting two spaces after punctuation ends. Uh, so I had to highlight where I had double spaces after after a period or, or a terminating character in sentences. So those are really the only highlighting changes I've made. Um, and I, how I detect whether or not to turn on and off my spelling and some other things. 
uh, short uh, short stuff for uh, um, things I would type a lot and I don't want to actually get a typo in. Stuff like that. Um, I don't know if I put the Vim bit in my kernel tools. I genuinely don't remember. Let me go look real quick because it's probably worth tossing some of those in there. No, I just have to get scripts. Uh, notes on environment. Yeah, so if this, sorry, this is the. This is where I've been tossing some things to collect. Um, but yeah, I can add. I'll add a note on that. Uh, Vim, MRC bits. Uh, Docker bits. Yes, okay. Um, now it's well after one. Uh, I'm through a bunch of things. I didn't get to doing the P Store block stuff today. I apologize. Um, do I stream daily? No. Uh, currently, I've been doing it every week, although the holidays are coming up, so I might take some off here. But it has seemed like uh, this time slot works pretty well for me, um, and and people show up, uh, so it seems like it's a it's a workable time. But it gets recorded, and I. I put them up on YouTube too because people are asking about seeing them uh, as they sort of age off on, on Twitch. Anyway, so I think I'm going to stop here. Uh, we've sent out the, the commits for getting the core of it in, and I'll send out these patches and get them in the next soon. Um, any Discord? You get notifications? I, I don't know. Twitch has a going live thing. Um, We'll see. Um, Google allows me to stream, no NDA issues. Well, it's all Linux kernel code. Like that's the work I do. Uh, so there's, I'm not working on code that's proprietary. Um, anyway, uh, I think that's that's all I've got. Uh, thank you for watching and thanks for help with <laughs> me fumbling around looking for the bitmap weight. I knew that there was a function for it. I could not remember. Thank you so much uh, for helping me. Um, yeah, I think I'll, uh, I'll sign off here. Thank you so much uh, for joining me, spending time watching this. Hope you found it interesting, found something useful. Um, thanks a lot. Take care. See you next time.